The patch we've all been waiting for is finally here, and there are a ton of new builds popping off. As always, we've got you guys covered with all the meta updates, and in today's video, we'll be breaking down 10 of the most OP new builds in 13.10. And remember, if you want to improve fast and get the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With Skillcap, you'll uncover the secrets to climbing ranks fast that only take a few minutes to learn and can be immediately applied in your next game. The best part? It's completely completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill capped, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, now back to the video. Starting things off with a couple top lane builds, a setup really flying under the radar so far is Lethality Quinn. The new Ghost Blade is looking like such a broken item, and it's even more disgusting on a champion who thrives off roaming like Quinn. You have the movement speed from your ultimate combined with the out of combat movement speed from Ghost blade and the active movement speed, so getting around the map and snowballing has never been easier for Quinn. The reworked Prowler's Claw is going to work really well for your second purchase, as its new passive has great synergy with Quinn's kit. It's basically like the old Dusk Blade passive, where when you dash, your next attack will deal bonus damage. Lastly, to round out the three item core will be the Collector. As a counter pick to these melee top laners who lack a gap closer like Garen or Darius, Quinn can work amazing with this new build in 13.10. Although Fleet is the most popular keystone on Quinn, if you're going Lethality, opting for Electric to amplify that burst works super well. This build is not completely new, but it hasn't been in meta for a while and has become so much stronger for 13.10 as Trinity Force Camille is back. The buffs to Trinity Force have seen the win rate on the item spike multiple percentage points on Camille. AD and attack speed on the item are up, while the threefold passive duration was buffed as well. Camille's overall win rate has seen about a 2% jump, so she's looking like a really solid top lane pickup right now. This isn't to say that Divine Sunderer should never be purchased, as it still has its value into tankier comps, but you need to be building Trinity way more often. In games where you're laning against a squishy ranged champ, definitely run Trinity. Even against bruisers, Trinity can be a great play, especially if the rest of the enemy comp is very squishy. To try to keep it as simple as possible, if the enemy comp has two or more health stackers, look to go Divine, if not, prioritize Trinity Force. After building Trinity, the rest of the build is pretty standard, with Ravenous Hydra second and Death Stance third. Rune Page is grasped with Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Unflinching, followed by Free Boots and Biscuits for secondaries. One of the most broken builds of the patch that could very well be hotfixed, consists of Ghost Blade on Hecarim. It's really not even close analytically, as Ghost Blade is heavily outperforming every other mythic on Hec. These numbers are bound to change a little bit throughout the patch, but at the time of making this video, Ghost Blade has a 3% better win rate than Eclipse, and is besting Divine Sunderer by a whopping 5%. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand why Ghost Blade works so well on Hec, as the movement speed it provides has immense synergy with Hecarim's passive. The complete core build you want to run is Ghost Blade Rush into Manamune second and Spear of Shojin third. By running Phase Rush as the Keystone Rune, it makes Hecarim skirm even more lethal, and playing for that item spike of Ghost Blade is extremely key. If you're looking for a carry jungler to add to your champion pool right now, other than Kha'Zix, Hecarim is an extremely good option with this new build. Rengar's build has changed completely in 13.10, and it's for the best if you're a Rengar main because he's looking insanely strong. Drop Dusk Blade immediately if you're still running it, and start rushing Ghost Blade. If you thought the difference in win rate of Hecarim's mythic items were crazy, Rengar is on a whole other level. Ghost Blade is currently winning over 7% more than Dusk Blade. We noted in our 13.10 tier list that Dusk Blade would likely become a pretty weak item with its new passive, and that is definitely playing out thus far. Hold on a minute, because it's not just Ghost Blade that is unique with this setup. The new Storm Razor is fitting in exceptionally well on Rengar as a third purchase. The item combination of Essence Reaver and Storm Razor heavily amplifies Rengar's one-shot power and makes finding picks with R extremely effortless. The rune page for Rengar consists of First Strike as the keystone, with Free Boots, Futures Market, and Cosmic Insight. Best secondaries are Sudden Impact and Relentless Hunter. Mages only saw two item changes in 13.10, but one of them has been extremely impactful. The buffs to Lost Chapter, with the cost being reduced from 1300 to 1100 gold, has opened up a very interesting strategy on mages. Since Lost Chapter completion is such a big spike in lane, what you can do is start the game off with a mana crystal and refillable potion, run Futures Market in runes, and grab yourself an extremely early Lost Chapter buy. Now, of course, by starting mana crystal, you're very limited in your trading ability the first three levels, but the whole point of the strat is to run it on champs that can't even trade at those levels anyways. Malzar is arguably the best user of this strat because his early levels are absolutely horrendous. You're never really looking to trade, so accelerating that lost chapter buy is extremely worth it. Vagar, Victor, Aurelian Soul, and Rise are a few of the other champs that can run this strategy to great success. The key is to make sure you're playing towards your win condition. You're not trying to trade pre-lost chapter buy. Farming is of the utmost priority as you want to complete chapter and then you start playing more aggressive with your advantage. If you're looking to level up your CS game, our Master in Minutes course is a great resource to help you out. This strategy is definitely going to work a lot better in low elo than in high elo because in the lower ranks, 
players won't exploit you as hard for missing the health you would have got for running Doran's Ring. A new build that's popping up on a bunch of ADCs this patch, and that can work super well on Uction 2, consists of a Storm Razor Rush. For the item being 300 gold more expensive, it's already more cost efficient due to the fact 10 extra AD has been added on. The new passive now grants movement speed instead of a slow, which actually synergizes way better with itself. You stack up your energized proc by attacking and moving, so the fact that you now gain bonus movement speed from the passive itself means you'll be stacking it up faster than before. For a champion like Uction, who can cover a ton of ground with his E, it's super easy for him to stack these energized passives, which gives Storm Razor way better value on him relative to most champs. Now, it's not just Storm Razor that is new about Uction's build. You are going to be running Rage Blade as your second item. What makes Storm Razor even better as a rush when going for this two item core is the fact that Storm's passive damage now has an AP ratio. With Rage Blade providing 30 AP, the AP ratio on Storm Razor doesn't go to waste. The final item to round out the three item core is Rapid Fire Cannon. Fire Cannon now providing more AD in exchange for less attack speed is really great for Uction. All in all, this build offers a mix of everything as you have great upfront damage with Storm and Fire Cannon's energized attacks while the stacking power of Rage Blade helps you out in those extended fights. For the rune page, it's press the attack with Presence of Mind, Alacrity, and Coup de Gras, followed by Shield Bash and Bone Plating for secondaries. We were skeptical of Zaya's power going into 13.10 with her no longer being able to build both Gale Force and Quick Blades, but there's a brand new build that is more than making up for the loss. Storm Razor as your rush item, followed by Quick Blade second, is performing absolutely insane on Zaya. The fact Storm Razor now provides you with movement speed instead of a slow really helps to make up for not building Gale Force and allows you to kite out fights quite nicely. AD going up on Storm Razor means this two item core packs a massive amount of upfront burst. These front loaded builds are generally a lot better for solo queue, where being able to capitalize on catch plays is made way easier. Pair Zaya up with Rakan, hit this two item core, and you'll be picking enemies off left, right, and center. Third item to round out the build depends on the game, as Bloodthirster and Fire Cannon are both great options. Into heavier ranged comps, going Fire Cannon will work best, while into lower mobility melee comps, Bloodthirster will work amazing. As for the rune page, it's Lethal Tempo with Presence of Mind, Bloodline, and Coup de Gras. Optimal secondaries are Magical Footwear and Biscuits. It's no secret how OP Cog is with the new Rage Blade, but it's not really a new build for him, so we won't feature it in this video. One ADC who can now build Rage Blade, though, who was not before and is performing extremely well in 13.10, is Twitch. Crack being changed to a legendary item and Rage Blade swapped over to a mythic has opened up this new on hit build path for Twitch. You still want to rush the Blade of the Rune King, nothing has changed on that front, but grabbing Rage Blade second works insanely well now. Hurricane was actually buffed this patch as well, providing magic damage on hit as well as the bolts damage going up, so the team fight power it provides is even more ridiculous. Twitch with his ultimate and this three item core completed with an enchanter support by his side is going to be difficult to beat impact wise come those late game fights. Rune page to run is lethal tempo with presence of mind Alacrity and Coup de Gras. Best secondaries include Taste of Blood and Ultimate Hunter. The new support item Echoes of Helia has amazing value on champions with spammable abilities, and there's really nobody better in that regard than Sona. Sona Q is a point and click spell on a relatively short cooldown, so it had immense synergy with the Echoes passive. The passive reads Damaging a champion grants a soul shard up to a max of two. Healing or shielding an ally consumes all shards, restoring health and dealing damage per shard to the nearest enemy. Get Sona to late game with this item, and there is no support with greater impact in a drawn out extended team. Fight. Second item in the build is going to be the revamped Ardent Sensor. There's a bit less solo power on the item with its AP being lowered, but the passive damage was buffed, so your ADC will be dealing more damage as a result. The rune page for Sona is airy with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Gathering Storm. The best secondaries are Conditioning and Revitalize. For the final build of the video, rounding it all out is going to be a super insane two item core for Nami. With Mandate being swapped to a legendary item, you'd think that Nami would want to prioritize it a bit later on as a second or third pickup, but that is not the case. You actually want to continue rushing Mandate, despite it being a legendary, and pick up Echoes of Helia as your mythic in the second item slot. Mandate is just way too good on Nami to pass up on, as her E instantly proccing its passive gives her ADC such a lethal trading pattern. This two item core is heavily outperforming anything else on Nami, and is the perfect build in helping you accelerate leads to close games out quickly. The Lucian Nami duo just got even better in 13.10, as Nami now has even more ways to buff up Lucian and allow him to thrive. For the rune page on Nami, look to grab Aerie with Mana Flow, Transcendence, and Scorch. Optimal secondaries are Bone Play and revitalize. And if you want to improve fasting at the rank you've always wanted, then go to skillcap.com. With premium courses for every role and skill taught by the best players, Skillcapped is the perfect platform to help take your game to the next level. Take our wave control course. While you wait for your next game to start, you can learn freezing, fast pushing, slow pushing, bouncing waves, the list goes on, all in just a few minutes to maximize your improvement rate. Or maybe you just like seeing your opponent's health go to zero. Then you'll love our trading course. We even have a skill test at the end so you can 
see how good you really are. Players just like you are leaving 5 star reviews and raving at how helpful they are. That's not all we offer though, as every week we release 10 brand new smurf commentaries where a challenger player teaches you how to climb out of the exact rank you're stuck in. If you're looking for something more personal instead, then we got you covered with one on one coaching from our trained challenger experts. All this seemed too good to be true, well don't worry, we're backed by a rank up guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below and get the rank you've always wanted. So there you have it guys, 10 new builds that are incredibly strong for 13.10 that you should be looking to abuse before they get nerfed. Thanks so much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and we'll see you in the next one.